as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Now that certainly implies getting on each other's skin, causing some static, causing some sparks. But this is a healthy thing. Men challenging men to grow to a higher level, to be better, to, to, to go further, to accomplish more in life. Sometimes that means conflict. Sometimes that means sparks fly. And one of the problems that we have today in the church, somebody's happy about that. One of the problems we have, some, looking for a fight over there. Some, one of the problems we have in the church today is any kind of conflict just seems to freak the willies out of people. And we come unglued and we just get so uncomfortable with it. And, and we think, well, that, that's just unscriptural, brother. We can't, we can't have a conflict. It's just unscriptural. So we, we got to assault this calm, calm, calm. And we've gotten this picture of Christianity that if you're a real man of God, you are in an eternally morphine-like state. <laughs> Where nothing rouses you, you never get mad, nobody raises their voice, nobody conflicts, you know. But that's really not what the Bible teaches. Now, there are parts of the Bible that give us a picture of, of calmness and stuff like that. We read about it in Colossians, the third chapter. This is just one example where Paul writes and he says, put on therefore as elect of God, in other words, as chosen men of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. <laughs> Sounds kind of crappy. But, uh, but in the Bible, for them, whenever they would talk about, like today we talk about from your heart, in the, in the New Testament times, in the Eastern culture, they talked about from their bowels. I like the heart a little bit better, it's a little bitter image, but, uh, but bowels of mercy, it's kind of like what we say, from your, from your guts, man, feeling it, okay? Uh, be filled with bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Now this certainly gives a picture of calmness. And people will say, well, Pastor Mark, man, the Bible says you should be calm and meek and mild. And stuff. Yeah, that's what Paul wrote. I agree with that. But it's not all he wrote. And one of the problems that we've had is that over the last 30, 40 years in America, and it really actually goes back further than that, but I'll let Murrow talk about some of those things. But certainly over the last 30, 40 years, what I call the girlification of the church what we have been presented overwhelmingly is this warm and fuzzy side. This girly side. You know, anything, uh, uh, you know, having to do with kindness and meekness and tenderness and stuff like that. We get, li that we, we amplify, but then we ignore all the other parts of the Bible that give us a little bit different picture. And it's been an unbalanced approach to speaking to men and teaching men how they're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be just walking around like a bunch of morphine addicts, doped up out of our minds, constantly calm and never, uh, and, and constantly afraid of arguing or debating anything. Now, what I want you to do is I want to take a look at this guy, Paul, who talked about kind and meekness and all these other kinds of stuff. I want you to look at him. How you'll get a better picture of looking at the guy, right? A guy talks in a certain way. Well, what's he like? Well, I want us to look at in, in the book of Acts. This is uh, uh, the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. Uh, Paul uh, had, and uh, Silas had been arrested and they were thrown into prison and uh, they had the snot beat out of them and, you know, at midnight instead of whining and crying, God, why did you let this happen to me? Man, they're just singing and praising God. Everybody's listening to it. All of a sudden, God sends an earthquake and the doors pop open and stuff. And I mean, it's a wild, incredible story. You ought to read it. It's really great. But I want you to see what happens here. Because uh, it says, when it was daylight, the magistrates sent their offers, officers to the jailer with the order, release those men. What men? Paul and Silas. These are the guys. We arrested them. We beat the snot out of them. We put them in chains. They spent a miserable night uh, in jail. And this isn't like county lockup, okay? This is 2,000 years ago. You know, this, is, this has got to be really nasty in there. They weren't really worried about making things warm and fuzzy for people. Miserable night in jail. Well, then the jailer told Paul, who by this time Paul had converted the guy. He's jazzed. He says, man, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas can be released. Woohoo! Now you can leave, brothers. Go in peace, peace, peace. Just be thanking to God that, that you're, you're free.